If you're viewing bright light in the middle of the night, you are suppressing dopamine release. If you're suppressing dopamine release, you are suppressing testosterone levels. We're talking all about hormones, these incredible chemicals that can impact our mood, our behavior, our feelings of optimism or pessimism. The amazing thing about hormones is that hormones impact all those things, but all those things, how we feel and what we do and what we think also can impact our hormones. And so it's a really fascinating area of biology that impacts every single one of us every day, both in wakefulness and in sleep and throughout the lifespan. So let's talk about hormone optimization. And many of you have heard me talk about this before, and I'm not going to belabor the point that Viewing bright light within the first hour of waking, whether or not it's from artificial light or ideally from sunlight, has these powerful effects on sleep and wakefulness. But we have to return to this if you want to understand how light can impact hormones because hormones, light and dopamine have a very close knit relationship. So much so that your light viewing behavior can actually have a direct effect on hormone levels and fertility. It can have a direct effect on hormone levels and libido. It can have a direct effect on hormone levels and your ability to heal quickly. And I'm not talking about shining light on particular injuries that may or may not have positive effects. Um, you know, if we can argue about that on a, pre, on a subsequent episode, it may. But what I'm talking about is viewing light with your eyes. So let's talk about that now because the scientific literature on this are robust and they extend back several decades. And yet I think most people don't really understand how powerful this relationship is between light dopamine, hormones, and all the great things that the sex steroid hormones do when they're available in your body in the proper ratios. So how does this translate to a protocol? This translates to the protocol of if you want to optimize testosterone and estrogen, you need to get your light viewing behavior correct. It's not just about optimizing your sleep, which is also important. It's about getting sufficient amount of light in your eyes so you have sufficient levels of dopamine. So the simple protocols for that I've reviewed before, but it means getting anywhere from two to 10 minutes of bright light exposure in your eyes early in the day. It is not sufficient to do this with sunglasses unless you have to do that for safety reasons. It's fine to wear prescription lenses and contacts. If you can't get sunlight for whatever reason, you want to use bright artificial light, but that is absolutely critical for timing the cortisol release properly, limiting cortisol release to the early part of the day, getting increases in dopamine that are gonna promote the production of testosterone and estrogen to healthy levels. The other aspect of light viewing behavior that's extremely important is to avoid bright light exposure to your eyes in the middle of the night. If you're viewing bright light in the middle of the night, you are suppressing dopamine release. If you're suppressing dopamine release, you are suppressing testosterone levels. So much so that I would wager that a major effect of sleep deprivation on reducing testosterone and estrogen is not necessarily because of the lack of sleep per se. It's because usually when people are not getting enough sleep, they're getting too much light in their eyes in the middle of the night as well. A study on this has not been completed yet, but there are two studies published in Cell and Neuron, both cell press journals, excellent journals, showing that viewing bright light with the eyes in the middle of the circadian night has a detrimental effect on dopamine and therefore has a detrimental effect on things like testosterone and estrogen. So you can't even begin to talk about supplements and other ways to optimize testosterone, diet and its effects on testosterone and estrogen and fertility and reproductive behavior, etc., until you get your breathing right, until you get things like your light viewing behavior right. So bright light early in the day and throughout the day is great. View as much bright light, ideally sunlight as you can, as much as you safely can. You obviously don't want to burn your retinas or damage your retinas. So never look at any light that's so bright it's painful to look at. But getting a lot of light in your eyes is not just about adjusting your sleep wake rhythms. It's also about optimizing your sex steroid hormones. And avoiding bright light in the middle of the night is not just about not disrupting your sleep. It's also about optimizing the sex steroid hormones. In fact, in thinking about tools, for many people that are suffering from low levels of estrogen if they want higher levels or low levels of testosterone if they want higher levels, just getting the breathing and light viewing behavior, which will indirectly support sleep behavior, can be a huge and positive effect on levels of sex steroid hormones. 